Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another presentation of High School Sports on NJ.com. I'm your host, Rich Bevensey. With me today is girls basketball beat writer for the Star Ledger, Chris Ryan. Chris, you're embarking on your first season of uh, being the man in charge of girls' hoops. You ready? Yep, I'm ready to go. It's been a lot of fun so far, and okay. I'm ready to keep going. I have heard you're doing a great job so far, so let's get to it. Big news out of Point Pleasant Beach involving a pair of All-State players. Uh, why don't you tell us what's the, what's the status of this situation? Well, as we learned last week, Marina Mabry and Caitlin Flaherty both transferred from Point Pleasant Beach. Flaherty is now at Metuchen. Uh, Marina Mabry will be at Manasquan in the coming month. Uh, we'll talk about Flaherty first, I guess. Uh, she'll be at Metuchen. She expects to debut this week. She won't have to sit out the 30 days as she moved to Metuchen, and she'll in turn end up debuting this week after making her practice requirements, which she should do by Friday. Okay. What about Mabry at Manasquan? Mabry, we learned today that uh, she'll actually have to sit out the 30 days. She'll probably debut sometime in February, so we'll have to wait a month to see her actually back out on the court. But as we've learned over the last uh, about five days or so, it's big news. It really changes a lot of things over the entire state, not even just uh, Monmouth County. Yeah. Well, I mean, let, we're not going to focus on Point Beach, but let's focus on now Metuchen and Manasquan. What kind of effects do you see on those respective teams? Um, but, well, we'll start with Metuchen. Uh, in that blue division, uh, they were expected to be a competitive team. Uh, they've got Cassie Smith, who's one, already one of the top five players in that county. Now adding Flaherty into the mix, that vaults them from a, maybe a division contender up until really a county contender, adding wow. a top five player in the state in Flaherty. Okay. Uh, it could be a huge thing for them, and it could really help them in cent Central Jersey Group 1. They could be a sectional title contender in that group. And, I mean, that's a really big swing just from one player. Yeah, right. And then, uh, of course, uh, with Mabry, how does her presence affect Manasquan? Uh, the funny thing about Manasquan, we already have them at number 10 in the state. They're right. off to a 5-1 and one start. They've already beaten Red Bank Catholic. Um, so adding Mabry to that mix could vault them even higher. They could be in the mix for a potential Group 2 title. Uh, if they weren't already, I think that <laughs> even puts that in a, okay. a greater chance. And especially with Shabazz moving down to Group 1, I, don't, I wouldn't say it paves the way for Manasquan, but it sure helps. Yeah, definitely. definitely with, they have Rumson to compete with in Group 2, and, right. uh, along with Lincoln and a few other teams. But, I mean, adding Mabry to an already good team with Sam Sullivan, Courtney Hageman, uh, a few good players already there, it's going to be make them that much tougher to beat. Okay. All right. Well, now let's move on to our next topic, which is surprise teams within the top 20. Now, you made it clear to me that these teams aren't surprises to be in the top 20, but perhaps they're achieving more than anyone might have expected. Definitely. Let's start with Franklin in Somerset County. What, what, what do you have to say about that? Well, we had Franklin uh, pretty high to begin the year. We thought they would be kind of the number two team in Somerset as they ended last year. They lost to Gill St. Bernard's in the county final last year, and they made a, a lot of noise early on. Week one, they beat Gill St. Bernard's by almost 20 points. I mean, a wow. really, really good win against a good Gill team, and they're right now 5-0 and up to number five in the state. Uh, and they're playing great. They, the funny thing about them, they have no seniors on their team. Uh, they're a junior-heavy team uh, featuring Adriana Miller, Jada Wild Goose, Mary Trossi, Amia, Amia Rankins. Uh, they're a really talented group and a young group, and they're showing early on that they're ready to compete with the best of them. Okay. Now, the next team we're going to talk about, Patterson Eastside. Everybody knows about the boys' team, which, as of Sunday night, defeated State Powerhouse St. Anthony's. But... There's another basketball team under the roof at that school, and they're doing pretty well. Yep, they've already got an actual win against uh, I, uh, Immaculate Heart, uh, the Bergen County Power. They were at number five, I, I believe, to begin the year. Uh, they go out in their county tournament, they, or sorry, I mean their, in their holiday tournament, they beat them. Uh, that's a great win for Patterson Eastside. They're 4-0 already, I mean, and they're rolling early on. And what about, uh, let's go to Union County, and why don't you talk about Roselle Catholic? Roselle Catholic, again, another team off to a great start. Um, undefeated so far, they knocked off Morris Catholic in their own holiday tournament mm -hmm. um, over the break. Uh, they've jumped up to number 15 in our top 20. Uh, just a great start for the Union County School, and they've already got a key win to add to their resume going forward. Chris, as usual, good news from you, and thanks for your help, man. Yep, thank you, Rich. All right, good stuff. Look for this fella's uh, analysis, game reports, blogs, you name it. Uh, look on, on online at nj.com and, of course, in the pages of the Star Ledger. On behalf of Mr. Ryan, I am Rich Bevinsey, your host. You've been watching a presentation of high school sports on nj.com. We'll see you next time.